Right everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is going to be a short video all about the Y-Plan system. I've created this testing rig so that it keeps all components all in close proximity, which makes it easier for testing and for learning purposes. So to start off, I'll do it full frame so you can visually see how everything works. So if we put the programmer on and then we flick the room start up, it will send power to the zone valve. The zone valve will make the micro switch and the boiler and the pump will light up. For this instance, it's basically simulating a system boiler because the boiler and the pump are together. But I'll go through the wiring diagram during that to see. Um, so we'll turn heating off. Right, so now I'll just demonstrate with the hot water. Turn to constant. So if the cylinder stat was calling, you can hear the zone valve spring back and obviously boiler and pump fire. And if we turn the cylinder stat off, it goes off again. So I'll go through the individual components a little bit more in depth one at a time. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna go through a little bit more in depth is the programmer. So the ST9400C, Honeywell, I'm only using Honeywell products purely because it's what I'm most familiar with and it's what I encounter mostly on a day-to-day -day basis. So it looks like this in the box. With the programmer itself, it should be lit up obviously when you get there. Underneath there's two screws. I've already unscrewed them to save me have to keep undoing them. And that literally just pulls off. So you can see the two fixing screws. And then what we've got is basically the terminal bar. So you've got live, neutral, earth. So they're permanent. So no matter what demand's on, no demand, this can come straight from your switch through spur or for wiring purposes to go with the diagram. I've come off the 10 way, but I'll go through that a little bit more in a minute. So if we were to get a multimeter, or a voltage tester, whichever you use. Put your first probe on Earth, your second probe on Live, so you can see we're getting 240. And then neutral, nothing, and you can go neutral or whatever, so that's fine. So if you turned up at this property, for example, and the programmer looked like that, no display, but you were to remove the front, and then you were to test first probe on earth, second probe on live. If you were getting power to it and there was no display, you need a new programmer. If you weren't getting power to it, then you'd probably investigate why you're not getting power to it. So you'd have to see where it comes from. So it'd be your switch fuse spur. So when it comes to learning something new, everybody has their own little things that makes them remember and it helps them learn. And then once they've learned it, that's probably how they'll always remember it. So the way I like to think about wiring and a 10 way for a wire plan system, for example, is I remember it like a train. So you start from your switch fuse spur, you end up at your 10 way. So you got your power going to your 10 way and then you got your power going to your programmer. And then your programmer is almost like your first station. So, and then it picks a track to go down and then once it goes from your programmer for heating, for example, it'll go back to the 10 way and then it will switch rails and then it will go to your room stat. And then it makes a link over if it's calling and then it goes from your room stat back to your 10 way, which then goes to your free port valve. Once your free port valve makes a switch over and then it comes all the way back down to your 10 way and goes back to your boiler and it lights up. So it's making its, its circuit Initially, it goes from one place to another. So, like I said, you'll all remember it different ways, but I like to remember it as if it's it's a train. It has to start its destination, which is your switch through spur, and then your power has to find its, its tracks, its circuit, however you want to remember it, through all the components to end up at the boiler and the pump to obviously give you heating and hot water. Right, so with the programmer, 
like I said, I was going to go into this quite in depth, which is why I am doing exactly that, just so you don't get confused. So on the back of the programmer, so that's the programmer. On the back, there'll be a little wiring diagram. So every program you have may be slightly different if it's a different model. Um, but on here, you can see that you've got your live, your neutral and your earth, and that's coming in. And then you've got your hot water off which is important um, in a Y plan system. And then you've got central heating off, which we never use. And then hot water on, central heating on. So when you look at it on here, so this one's your hot water off. I've wired it gray because when you get to the 10 way, it's the gray that goes to your um, three port valve. So I've just tried to correspond the colors. So I've gone number four is central heating on and then central heating is white on the Y plan valve. So I've tried to wire it here so that it's just easier for you to see. And then number three is hot water on and I've put te red tape around it because I've also put red tape around it on the Tenway for us to look at in a minute. But straight away, as soon as you take the front off the programmer and you see all these cables, it can be quite daunting, especially if you're not quite sure. Um, but I mean, they're all labeled up and then when you've got the one, two, three, four, it's best to check on the wiring diagram on the component itself to obviously give you clarity. Um, but that's it. Hopefully that's cleared up anything on the programmer, you know, you weren't sure of. If um, for some reason, you know, the programmer wasn't working, as I said at the beginning of the video, you turned up and there was power to the programmer, but no display. If you wanted to give the customer heat in while you were going away to get a new program, if you didn't have one, you can put a link from permanent live over to central heating on, and then that will then override the programmer to then maybe get the customer some heat. Um, we all know how happy they get about not having heating and hot water in the winter. So that might get you some brownie points. Right, so again, for demonstration purposes, this training rig is, is all Honeywell components. Like I said, it was just easier to work on and it's what I use on a daily basis. So if you're in a customer's property, there's literally a flathead screw at the top. Undo that, front comes off. Happy days. So again, it can look quite daunting, but you've basically got earth, neutral, and then you've got one and three. So your power comes in on one once your programmer is calling and then when you make the switch it'll go back on three so at the moment i've left the programmer not calling for anything so we go earth we go to neutral we're not getting anything nothing on three nothing on one which is exactly how it should be and now if i turn the programmer on to heating we're getting power on one, but we're getting nothing on three until the room stat makes. And then it goes back on three. So it's the same principle, like I said, how I remember it. We've obviously a train. The train started off at the switch fuse spur. It went to the programmer. You decided to pick its lane, which was gonna be heating. It went from heating to the 10 way to the room stat, which came in on number one. And then there was no power going out. So that's where the train was just sat there doing nothing until you obviously turn the room stat up to call for heat. It makes the switch inside the room stat, which sends it back on number three, all the way back to the 10 way, which finds the white on the Y plan valve. And then the Y plan motors over, makes the micro switch and it comes back on the orange and feeds the boiler and a pump. So as far as the room stack goes, that is pretty much all we need to know on there. So if you turned up at a customer's property and there was power on the programmer and it was sending power to the room stack, but when you were making the switch, it wasn't sending it back on three. What you can do is you can put a link from one over to three so you're bypassing this so again it'll give them a bit of heat when they didn't have heat before 
and it would be controllable off the programmer. So when they put the programmer on, it will bypass the room stat, go straight to the three port and fire up the boiler. Right, so to me on wire plan systems, the hot water side is the hardest to get your head around. Um, not gonna lie about it with the heating, it's quite straightforward. It goes from one to the other to the other. Um, and you'd expect it to be like that with a cylinder stat, but it's not. So we'll go through that a little bit more. So Honeywell cylinder stat, screw at the top, undo that, front comes off. Right, so with the cylinder stat, what you've got is when you're not calling for hot water, so programmer is not calling for anything, heat and hot water is both off. On this terminal, you're getting 240. On the common, you're getting zero. And on the middle one, you're also getting zero. And then what happens is when you put hot water on to the programmer, I'm now getting power. You're getting power to the common. And then when you've made the switch, you get power going back on your switch, which then goes to your 10 way and then goes to the boiler. So if we turn that on off, so you can see, still got 240 on your common because your programmer is calling but you're not getting any coming back on that until this one handed, until you've made your switch. There you go. And then that's the call back to fire your boiler. Right, we all know in a customer's property, we go to the airing cupboard, we locate the 10 way, we move all the washing, and laundry and towels or whatever they decide to keep in their cupboard and we expose a 10-way it rarely ever looks like this electricians very rarely make it nice and easy for us to obviously fault find on it's called a 10-way because there's 10 terminals you probably notice on here that the, the end two aren't being used and that is purely because for demonstration purposes, I've linked the boiler and the pump in together. So what you'd normally have is your switch live and your boiler feed and your pump live, they'd all be individual. So for now, our 10 way has become an eight way, but it's still the same. The older boilers will be wired up how this is wired. So we start on number one, you got your permanent live in. So this comes from your switch fuse spur. So, like I said, I keep referring back to the whole train scenario, but that is what helped me learn. It might click with you, you know, anything like that. So you've got your power coming from your switch view spur into terminal one, and then it goes out of terminal one to your programmer. And that's literally as simple as that. So at the moment, we've got 240 because this whole testing rig is live still at the moment. You got your live, your neutral and your earth. So the first three, you don't even need to worry about anymore. So out of your 10 way, we started off with an eight way and now we've just got rid of three. So we've only got five to worry about. Right, so on the 10 way, we've gone through terminal one, two, three is live neutral earth. Four was your central heating feed that goes up to your room stat. Five was your feed back from your room stat and then up to your Y plan. And then six is hot water on. So it comes from the programmer, 240, hot water on. And then it goes up to your cylinder stat on your common. If you're cooling, it comes back. And it basically just goes to the same terminal that your orange from your Y plan valve is in and it fires your pump and your boiler, but it also then kills the power to your gray. So then it motors over. So the reason I wanted to go through the hot water side of this a little bit more in depth, because I said it was a little bit more confusing. You've got here, which is your hot water off, which goes to your gray for your Y plan valve which basically holds it open so that it doesn't go through hot water. 
what you also see in there is the other cable which goes to number two on your cylinder stat. So I said that I remember things from using it as if it's a train going through the track, but in this instance, it doesn't actually, um, it doesn't work because although we're feeding from the programmer, when hot water's off on the programmer, you get 240 up to your 10 way. It goes up to your gray on your Y plan valve to hold the motor over. And then it also goes to your cylinder stat. But then what happens is when you're calling for hot water, so your programs, your program is on, calling for hot water, it goes 240 up to your cylinder stat on the common. And then when you're calling for hot water, because it's not satisfied, it's coming down on terminal one to the 10 way to fire your boiler and your pump. Once the cylinder stat is satisfied, what happens is it cuts the power down from number one, sends it down on number two, and then the number two then comes to your gray of your Y plan valve, which then holds the motor over to stop your hot water continuously heating. So that's the only bit that's a little bit confusing with it all.